Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So today we have a special video on one of the maybe more obscure mechanics in Forge Alliance Forever. I don't see this used all the time, uh, sometimes because it's a little bit dangerous, other times because it's kind of expensive, and that is the Billy Nuke. So we're going to be focusing in on that. And because we're talking about an obscure mechanic, I figured I had to invite the expert on obscure mechanics and uh, tutorials in Forged Alliance Forever, at least on the YouTube side. And that's going to be the Green Squire. Squire, would you like to say hello? Hello. Yes, it is awesome to be here. Uh, thanks so much for having me be part of this. Yeah, this is great. Can't wait to get into it. Perfect. And... I called you Squire just there. Is that okay? Do you want to go by Green or The Green Squire? Or could I call you like uh, TGS? TGS sounds pretty cool. Yeah, sure. That sounds dope. Yeah, no, any of the three works, Squire, Green. You could call me The if you want to, but I don't know if that's the most catchy. So yeah, Green is what I typically go by, but anything that floats your boat. Okay. Yeah, we'll do TGS because if I call you Squire, I feel like I'm relegating you to just like a cheap uh, off-brand guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. That's actually... Uh, you hit the nail on the head there. My uh, my name comes from my first guitar, which was a Squire guitar, and it was also green. So yeah, that's that's my name. Most people think it's a uh, kind of the like medieval Squire kind of thing, which which was my purpose. It was supposed to be a double entendre, but, um, but yeah, you could call me anything. All right, sounds good, TGS. Let's get into introducing the players. We got Team One up at the top, Team Two down at the bottom. Uh, this is going down on Naroxis map generator, by the way, because, you know, pretty much any game that's played is played on a 100% unique map that nobody's ever seen. Um, 3v3, starting with uh, what I believe would be the rear guard air position. We have got Apostu here going UEF opening first land in the lovely royal blue. Uh, down in the slightly different shade of blue, a little bit lighter, we have Sele Valere. And whether I'm pronouncing that right or not, God only knows. And then to the west, we have Apostu, and he's going as Cybran opening first land, best faction in the game. So I got to say I'm rooting for team number one in this instance. Uh, down at the bottom, team number two, starting off with System Failure, and he's going UEF opening first land. Where's his commander? There he is, walking out towards the middle. Love to see it. Um, in the rear guard air position, we have Colorix, who's going Cybran opening first land, second air, and now I'm really torn about uh, which team I want to win because both of them have a Cybern on them. So, you know, flip a coin. We'll see what happens. And last but not least for team number two, we have Taffy who's going first land, second air as the UEF. Already got a transport on the way as securing these corners is going to be relatively important. And his mirror is just now getting his air factory up. So might be a little bit behind on the air game. But while we're, wa while we're watching these drops, uh, you got any thoughts kind of on the map and how it looks? I know you haven't seen this replay, so I'm curious what you think at first glance. Yeah, yeah, no, this will be a this will be a fun one. Um, seeing a lot of UEF there, so I'm picturing it's going to be a pretty uh, turtly defensive match. But a couple Cybrans there, so it could be wrong. Uh, probably best guess here would be that it's not going to be a navy map. Uh, but other than that, yeah, this will this will be a fun one. Yeah. Well, I think on the Navy side, you know, bodies of water like this, it's it's kind of a coin flip on whether or not you see, especially with UEF, like you were saying, whether you see uh, cruisers um, being utilized for uh, tactical missile launchers. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. These guys are relatively high rated. I think lowest rated is going to be uh, Soul Ripper Noob actually at almost 1400. Everybody else in that 15 to 1700. Uh, rating range so we'll see how much value the the pros put on navy as we're seeing drops coming in now from apostu to contest this corner and a drop actually out from colorex down in the south going to be contesting the southeast corner and still no drop out from solare or Sele solare Sele valeric god i'm gonna mess that up so many times um and his air factory entirely focused actually on interceptors and scouts right now. So might not even be thinking about dropping this corner, which might be a mistake. I don't know. What do you think? Interesting. Yeah, I see. Uh, who is that? Calyrex already has a transport drop down to the bottom. So that uh, that could be dangerous if uh, Team 1 doesn't try to... Uh, re uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fix that? I don't know what the word I'm looking for is there. But <laughs> yeah, it could be dangerous for Team 1. I don't think it's I don't think it's fixed nut. I don't know what fixed nut is. 
Is that what you said? Fix nut? There's some word, man. What's the word I'm looking for? Not contest not that. Yeah, contest that. Yeah, let's go with that. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> this actually goes back to what we were talking about before. Uh, I don't know whether fix nat is another Southern California thing, but we were getting ready to start <laughs> recording, and uh, Squire goes, "I gotta go take a waz real quick," and I was like, "What is a waz?" Yeah, yeah, it was so natural too, because all my roommates in college now we would talk about just taking wazes all the time, and duelists is just like, "What on earth are you talking about?" <laughs> Anyway, it's take a piss in case there are other people that don't know what that means that are normal yeah, like me. Leave a, leave a comment down below if you've ever heard of taking a was. Maybe I'm just weird, but. <laughs> yeah, while you're down there, uh, head over to uh, Squire's channel and uh, drop him a sub and uh, check out some of his content. Lots of good uh, tutorials and kind of more mechanics based uh, videos out there, but really helpful oh, for newer you. players. I've learned some things from him, too. Yes, and one lesson I have to pass on is uh, those interceptors that were parked right there uh, from Sele, Seal, maybe. Uh, probably not the best place to park your interceptors. They just got mopped up by some tanks right there. Um, so, yeah, that's probably my first lesson. Oh, yeah. We're already learning. Don't put your interceptors in front of enemy tanks on the ground. <laughs> and that's one to grow on. It looks like, uh, who is that? Oh, I like it. Yeah, it looks like Soul Ripper is moving in with his uh, his commander up top. Oh, uh, yeah. So we do have a 2v1 situation here with Apostu with a relatively healthy T1 army here. Uh, getting some assistance from Soul Ripper Noob. That's going to be rough for Taffy to hold against <coughs> two commanders, especially because Apostu does have artillery in this mix. Uh, so should be able to deal with the point defense. One actually getting denied by Soul Ripper as he's... Taking a little bit of love taps from the PB, but not the end of the world, and the artillery will come in and mop up the rest of it. So this position looking pretty rough for Taffy to be able to hold. Team one, not going for drops right off the bat, except for Apostu, but maybe going a little bit slower, expanding a little bit slower meant that they had what it took to gain control, and Taffy ends up not really getting a great return on his investment for these three land factories that are down here, or up here. Yeah, it's interesting too. It looks like uh, they'll probably be even on the corners now. Top left is probably going to go to Team 1. Bottom right's pretty secure in Team 2. Although there is a slight incursion from uh, Seal, Sele. Yeah, down here at the down here on this little plateau. Three mexes uh, that were dropped by Calerix. Going to get denied. You can see the transport wreck there as... Uh, Sele Valere or Seal getting uh, getting those three mexes and got a good healthy T1 presence here but he is facing off against two players so you know it's a good thing he's UEF because uh, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to do some line holding as Apostu and Taffy exchanging love taps here on the other side of the map haven't seen a whole lot of com on com action um, Really, with the exception of, of this little interaction here between uh, Pastu and uh, Taffy. Yeah, that's interesting. And also the uh, the middle plateau area. No interest from anyone there. Yeah, I mean, it is two mexes. So I guess if you're going to go for early drops, you want to go for those corners where there are quite a few more mexes. But, uh, I mean, two mexes are two mexes. So uh, it seems true. like it should you be worth they, somebody's uh, time. Yeah, do you think a uh, artillery base would go well there, or is that just a waste of mass, in your opinion? Uh, artillery, I don't, I don't think artillery would be great because I don't think you have the range. But tactical missile launchers uh, could right, be a right. big problem there. But I don't think T two artillery is going to have enough range to really get to anything important. Um, TML though, for sure. Right, yeah, great point. Uh, yeah, I gotta remember those more in my games. It takes a little bit more micro, but they can be deadly. I forget them on both sides. I forget to build them, and I forget to defend against them. Exactly, the curse, the forgotten unit. They really shouldn't be forgotten. No, they shouldn't. As Sele Valere with a uh, gun upgrade on his commander pushing in against Tech 2 point defense actually here from uh, Calerix, and Calerix actually with a Tech 2 land HQ here uh, in the corner. So going for 
additional land pressure. Got his first Rhino out. That's going to make Sele Valere fall back. Um, he's in danger of losing, getting his forces pincered here as System Failure is advancing with his T1 units as well. And from Calorix. Calorix has actually both gotten Tech 3 air at a reasonable time in 10 minutes and gotten Tech 2 land. So very impressive um, from... Well, and actually Soul Ripper Noob has also got his Tech 3 air out and started to work on a Tech 3 P-Gen. So both air players doing really, really well. Got some good expansions and seem to have similar mechs counts as well from, from both sides. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, who is uh, Calyrix went for the HQ on the right of the map. I don't think I would have done that, but it definitely does allow some sooner Tech 2 units to get onto the field. So that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, and I mean, you could look at it from, like, it's definitely a high-risk, high-reward play, right? Because, like, if he if he did it and he lost that HQ, you know, that'd be sunk cost that he didn't get any benefit from. And uh, if he um, didn't do it, he probably would have lost this position from that push because exactly. he wouldn't have had yeah. the Tech 2 point defense. So those little, exactly. little optimizations. Yeah, it paid off well in this regard. And on both sides of the map, we actually got Tech 2 upgrades coming in from Sele Valere as well as Soul Ripper Noob. And like I said earlier, Soul Ripper Noob is the, is the guy we're going to be following. And Tech 2 is going to be important in, in this, uh, this chain that he's, going to be, that he's going to be going down and expanding on. So we'll, we'll check back in on him in a bit. Uh, in the middle... Um, we talked about how nobody was really prioritizing the middle. Taffy has actually gone and dropped it, though. Got himself those two mexes. Got himself a little land factory. He's got some labs out there patrolling. There's some scouts on a really not great scouting route out from Apostu that are flying right over some <laughs> Bobble AA. <laughs> I wonder if he'll make use of that uh, TML we were talking about. There's a couple exposed mass extractors. It would be easy pickings. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got the entirety of the main base there for Apostu. Um, but Apostu has figured out what's going on, and he is not too happy. And he's got all of the jokers in the world going in on it. And yes, I know they're called jesters. I was trying to make a joke, but I don't think that landed near at all. If you didn't <laughs> laugh, there's no way anybody laughed whenever <laughs> they're watching the video. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, that uh, not too happy with that base up there. Uh, won't be able to hold on to his gunships though, as ASF from Colerex as well as interceptors come in. Uh, but now Sully Valere uh, under threat from Stingers, and there are ASF out as well from Soul Ripper Noob, so they'll be able to clean up those gunships as well. Both air players doing a pretty good job of covering their allies' backs as gunship raid from Apostu is denied and then a snipe attempt on Sele Valeria also going to be denied. Nice thing, though, system failure at least has this land force to be able to follow it up and gain himself a little bit of ground. Um, I think he only gets one mechs out of that little push, but, you know. Well, I guess he gets these three up here on the plateau as Sele Valeria forced to give up a little bit more ground. Yeah, and it looks like uh, there's some posturing on the left side. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Got a lot of labs in this mix. Um, I did a video a while back. It looks like they're going to be able to overwhelm this this one PD, but that's you know to be expected because there's literally 100 units here. Um, I did a video a long time ago, though, on how I didn't think that labs were super viable long term. And maybe it's time to revisit that because... Uh, maybe Apostu knows something that I don't. I mean, he is a 1700 rated player and he's still got a lot of labs in his mix. Either that or he's just like getting rid of units. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that video. I've never invested too heavily on labs either, but uh, it'll be interesting. I mean, they took out a couple mass extractors, so they've already paid for themselves. I guess, yeah, if you think about it that way. Uh, but gunships out, uh, Soul Ripper Noob with uh, actually broadswords out too. So going for gunships without having 100% air control. Well, I guess he does kind of have 100% air control. Um, but right now, broadswords getting picked off by the ASF here out from Colorex. He's gonna lose lose those broadswords. 
And he's going to take an air engagement over Flak. That's not great for Soul Ripper Noob, but he should be just fine. Yeah, it looks like we have our first Tech 3 land on the field from, uh, who is that, Valere? Just exiting the main base right now. Ah, very cool. Titan. Tech level 3 Assault Bot. Gotta love to see it. Our star of the show is going for Tech 3 on his commander right now at 57%. And we also have Tech 2 coming in for System Failure, so adding to that gun upgrade. Yeah, it looks like the uh, Tech 3 on the field has already given Valeria an advantage on the right over there, pushing forward a little bit. Yeah, with that gun comm and the Titans being able to overcharge. I think this is all Tech 1. Well, I'll take that back. There are a handful of pillars in this mix. But System Failure might want to start looking at some triads or... Or just, you know, running his commander forward. That works, too. Just to overcharge those titans down, I guess. As, bam. Yeah. Both those titans eating an overcharge to the face. That'll hurt. And now Sally Valere, once again, running. That's one of the... That's one of the big things about Tech 3, I've noticed. Uh, is, like, you upgrade Tech 2 land... And like literally the best counter, at least early on, is just like use your commander to overcharge. Yeah, yeah. I mean that even works in a tech three too. A little bit more risky, but you can still overcharge some tech three units here too. I get, I get worried like overcharging lots of tech three. Yeah. Or like experimentals. Probably, uh, definitely a riskier playbook there. Probably when I start moving the comm back. But it looks like uh, both commanders still in the front lines here on the right. Well, and they both have uh, they both have some veterancy. They both have tech two. So I mean, it's not like they're you know we're working with like straight up vanilla commanders. Like these these chonkers have eighteen thousand HP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, there's some. Uh, is that tech three coming out from? Uh, is that Calerix on the right now as well joining the fight? Calerix also have wow. Calerix has also got tech three um, on the front line as well. So I guess system failure going almost entirely for spam and air support, as we've seen a lot of gunships coming out from him. And uh, Cholerix doing like the more elite tier units, I guess, with uh, Tech 3 land and Tech 3 air. So that's an interesting division of responsibilities. I wonder if they planned that or if they were just kind of like, ah, we're going with it. Actually, I yeah, just see Percival's. Looks like a little run by on the uh, bottom here from Valere. I take that back. There are Percivals here out from System Failure. So System Failure also made the jump to Tech 3 land. And now we have the show. Soul Ripper Noob going for the Billy Nuke. And this is a really interesting way uh, to to use the billy, to use the billy nuke and uh with tech three on his commander he's got uh 15 000 hp he's also going to be able to build those uh nukes pretty quickly because if you get tech two or tech three on uh as far as like the build suite it does affect like how quickly you can build tactical missiles and billy nukes and if you don't know what a billy nuke is it's it's a watered down version of like a full-size nuke it does, it does really good damage. I think it can kill everything except for experimentals in one hit, um, but is vulnerable to tactical missile defense. So that's the way you have to defend against it because uh, you know, Soul Ripper Noob has got this at 19 minutes. And uh, so it'd be rough to try and get an SMD up in that amount of time. You don't need an SMD. You can just use uh, tactical missile defense to shoot down the Billy Nuke. Yes, and a uh, cheap little trick for Cybrans, the Loyalists can return tactical missiles. So if the Cybran player just builds a bunch of Loyalists, they can return that Billy Nuke to Sender and uh, put a big surprise in store for Soul Ripper. Which is nasty. Yes, I. Uh, that happened to me when I was recording a video on tips and tricks. I, f I totally forgot about that, and then I built some Loyalists and got my Billy Nuke returned to me. So. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never forget that again, yeah. You're like, I'm on a sandbox. How is my commander under attack? Exactly, yeah, yeah. 
But we'll see what he does. Right now, he's just walking into the water. Um, and to give you an idea of what the range looks like on this bad boy, it is that big yellow circle. So if he gets on this middle plateau, there's a lot of really critical areas that are vulnerable, like system failures, entire base as well as all these units. It's really good at dealing with large clumps of units too because it's not super expensive and loads. I mean, with T3, I think it only takes like 30, 45 seconds to load. Yeah, which is crazy. Yet another reminder to build tactical missile defense. That's something I slack on in my games, but uh, if we needed another reminder, here it is. Oh yeah, dude. If I had a dollar for every time I had a mech sniped by TML because I <laughs> forgot to build tactical missile defense, like, I'd make way more money than I do on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. And you don't even... It's hard to recognize sometimes if you don't see the missile icon. You just look and your mechs is destroyed and you're like, what the heck? How did, uh, how did that happen? I just usually assume that it was a, a TML. <laughs> yeah, good like, yep, I forgot it. I forgot again. <laughs> and the... Uh, is that the commander on the plateau there? That is. That is, yes. He has a, a Tech 2 transport that he has airlifted and built himself a stealth field generator as well. Oh, so wow. uh, on team number two's side, they have zero idea any of this is happening. Um, no radar signatures, no nothing. Um, they will get a little read on it with this gunship flying over. So they'll see the stealth field generator. But as soon as they leave, the only thing they'll see are a couple of buildings. They won't see the units anymore. Wow. And now, really? Yeah, now he's airlifting his commander into into the water aggressively. Wow. I'm surprised that transport can lift the weight of those balls on that commander. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're titanium. Maybe carbon fiber. I don't know. Lightweight alloy of some sort. As Choleric. ASF battle? Say what? Potential ASF battle. Looked like it was brewing, but maybe. Maybe? Yeah, they're they're posturing for sure. I'm also trying to make sure I don't miss the uh, the first launch of this Billy Nuke. Look, I, lo I missed it. Fuck. Uh. Alright. So that was the first launch. As you can see, nowhere near as devastating as a regular nuke, but Dil did still take out a couple of Tech 3 mexes uh, there for Colerix. And Colerix is probably very confused because I don't think they've scouted this out. That's what uh, that's what I was just thinking. You see, a, I mean, that looks almost as big as a nuke. If I, if I wasn't paying attention, I would have thought, oh, crap, they have a nuke launcher already? So, yeah, they're probably very confused. Well, they're obviously better than oh. we are, as Colerix is like, is he in the water? And Taffy's like, yeah. So, okay, they're, they're up to, they, they see what's going on here. Now it's, now we'll figure out how they want to respond. Transport gets dropped down. Colerix is calling out for his team to make, uh, make torps. And he accidentally sent that to all. I'm guessing that was a team's message. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably, it's probably supposed to be. <laughs> but you know, I mean, if you're on, if you're on, if you're in Solar Reaper Noob's shoes, like, you've got to know that that's coming eventually. Yeah. yeah. And second nuke away, system failure does have TMD now up in his base. Taffy though, uh, Taffy does have a TMD up. He has a couple of TMD. Uh, they'll be able to shoot that down. So Taffy and system failure's bases. Uh, looking relatively safe as engineers now stream into the water here from Taffy to try and get some torpedo defense to get that commander out of there. And now uh, I'll be interested to see what he does with this because I haven't seen this replay yet and it looks like they're very keen to what uh, what he's doing. So this will be interesting. Yeah. Well, just like the forward Tech 3 land HQ, you know, I mean, this kind of thing is very high risk, high reward. He's going for another nuke. He's actually going after the ASF here for Colerix. Scouted those out. And Colerix, I don't think, sees him. Might hit. Wow. That's going to take out. So that that should... Solar Reaper Noob now should have air control. As he's getting buffeted by torpedoes. But now he's just going to go in with his ASF and clean up the rest.
That might have been a more. The, uh... Go ahead, sorry. Over the uh, opponent's base. I don't know if I would suggest that, but he got a he got a good chunk of them. I think he doesn't really care at this point. Like he's he's far enough ahead that it doesn't really make a huge difference as he's airlifted his commander out once again out of the water. Uh, torpedoes, torpedo tef torpedo pressure from Taffy, uh, forcing him out of the water. Another Billy Nuke going out this time on to one of system failures satellite bases no well there is one tmd i don't think that's going to be enough though to shoot it down all the way i think it takes three hits wow brutal it's going to level four t2 mexes there fully capped and they have a uh, team two has pushed a bit on the top left while we've been admiring the billy nukes they uh, took out the base up there oh that's true you're right they taffy has been putting in some work here his units are getting harried by gunships uh, the entire way through. So now it's up to, I guess, it's a race between uh, Apostu and, well, uh, Taffy and System Failure, because System Failure is also getting some good pushes in on the right hand side of the map as another Billy Nuke actually comes in on that Tech 3 army. I think it only grabbed like one Percival rest of them a little bit outside of that prime damage radius needed some SPF 100 but otherwise they'll be okay Is that push still going on and still labs out from Apostu the guy's got to know something that I don't hear interesting I wonder if those are those aren't just relics from the early game he's still building those yeah it looks like it pretty sure yeah Um, Soul Ripper Noob's commander. I think he launched another nuke going somewhere, but I don't see where it went. Uh, but this is going to be a big problem here for Sele Valere as he's got uh, probably 10 or 15 Percivals bearing down on him here. Bright side is his team does have air control, so he has a broadsword in defense. Soul Ripper Noob's going to send over another one. Another five or six definitely wouldn't hurt. As they're, uh, as they're defending against this, but he is gonna lose some mexes. Not great. Actually, as a whole flight of broadswords comes off the assembly line from Soul Ripper Noob, who has built an absolutely mahusive air grid back here. And yeah, he's pumping out those gunships. You know, I think I, I think I dare to say, you know, the first Billy Nuke was flashy, like it killed some mexes. But that second one, or maybe it was the third one on the ASF, uh, that might have been the most important one of this game so far. Because that's what yeah. got him air control. Yeah, that was clutch, for sure. We're working 114 ASF out from Soul Ripper Noob versus 54 out from Colorex. So literally two to one in the air game. Wow, and it's those moments like those that just make or break. Uh, I, I mean, they're not in a losing position by any means. No, uh, certainly not. But you can tell the entire team now is just air, 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 air. We have whalers out from Opostu in the north. Everybody is building broadswords from the UEF side of things. Um, and now these broadswords are starting to threaten system failure space too. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Definitely let them focus on the uh, gunship air-to-ground support. Little drop in uh, the top base in Apostu's base. Did those guys just walk up the whole base? I think they just walked up. I think those were remnants from uh, the push yeah. earlier. Gotcha. Ooh, and a spider lord. Is that a spider? Experimental on the right uh, from... Ah, Overwatch. yeah. No, that's a megalith. Megalith. That is a crab coming out. As we do have an air engagement, lots of broadswords gonna die. Uh, but he's got a whole new flight back here. And so he's just literally using the broadswords as bait. ASF from Calorex really have no choice but to go after the broadswords. And now the broadswords shift to Calorex's base as a Billy Nuke lands on system failure. And Calorex gonna go down. Wow. 
This is a 3v3, so full share is on. That was quite the play there. The uh, the excellent air engage to the Billy Nuke in the base followed up with their commander kill. That was quite the play. Yes. Very well done. But too many Sams for the broadswords to completely liquidate the base. As we do have another Billy Nuke coming in on System Failure's base. This one's going to take out his Tech 3 HQ. So, you know, there's that. System Failure now with very little as far as high-tech options. Uh, he is definitely experiencing System Failure right now. You can't just have that name and not make, have me make a pun off of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not going to happen. But it's Crab Push. Yeah, he's about to get some revenge up here. That's true. There are a good number of Percivals here uh, from Sele Valere. No Ravagers or PD really to speak of. Um, so as long as the Crab doesn't die to gunships, which he does have a lot of flak. I like a lot of flak. That's looking like, but that's also a lot of gunships. And the gunships are focusing exclusively on the flak, unfortunately. So that is going to be all of the mobile AA effectively dead. We do have a couple of bouncers back here that were stragglers. And now the crab just has to walk in and do whatever it can before it dies. As literally everybody is just going all T3 gunships now from team number one. Oh, and a, another Billy Nuke just hit on the left side of the map there. That's oh, painful. Oh, yeah. Going to level some of Taffy's forward base there. As Soul Ripper Nuke playing real dangerously here with his commander. Wow. Continental that is almost gets picked off. Wow. That is a, that's a ballsy commander there. <laughs> Dude, that dude got so lucky there. <laughs> and that's going to be system failure bowing wow. out, Taffy bowing out. Uh, so that's going to be that's going to be it for our game. Uh, so I thought this one would be cool just because, you know, it was it was a little bit it was a little bit one sided, but it was a really cool uh, it was a really cool use of I think a lot of different mechanics around Billy Nukes dropping the commander, moving him around, uh, keeping him alive, <laughs> you know, some of those things. Yeah, that was that was a fantastic cast, and I'll just say it was a honor to uh, be part of it. Thanks so much for uh, having me on this one. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and I know we were talking we were talking earlier, so you don't have to commit now. But we were talking earlier about potentially doing a cast on uh, the Green Squires channel as well in the future. Uh, so if you want to check, if you want to see that, um, go ahead over to his channel. Um, he's also got a lot of good tutorials and stuff like that. So it's linked down in the description below. So go give his channel a look. And if you want to see the next co-cast we do together, that'll be where it is. Uh, any closing words, Squire, TGS, the man? Uh, yeah, you have, uh, you've been so kind to me. So to all you guys watching, if you haven't subscribed to The Duelist, do it. This guy's awesome. What are you waiting for? Well, I appreciate it. All right, guys, that's it from me. Uh, we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Cool. Bye, guys.